We're here with Mike from Spark Fun, and we have an update on the on the accessibility session. User accessibility. User accessibility of documentation from lunchtime on Saturday. Go ahead, Mike. What's what's the summary for? Uh, what we spend our time talking about is um, hurdles to using and contributing to the documentation uh, on the hopefully open source warehouse website that we're trying to develop here, or system, I guess, is really what it is. Um, so these can be things uh, from um, user ability uh, issues like uh, dyslexia is one that we talked about, uh, limited vision, color vision issues, um, things like technological hurdles, um, somebody using a very old computer, somebody using a very low bandwidth connection, um, mm -hmm. or perhaps using a smartphone as a major point of access, and, uh, and also um, the idea that it may be uh, important for somebody to be able to print out documentation and take it to a remote location, or to be able to print it out at, say, an internet cafe and then take it home with them to work on. Um, and the hope is that uh, we can include this as sort of a, a, a back-end development level thing so that when a person is doing documentation, they don't have to be concerned with making documentation that is friendly to an end user with limitations. The back end of the system is capable of handling some rendering uh, where a user can, for instance, indicate, okay. I'm in a low bandwidth situation, and then they get the uh, existing documentation rendered in a way that is uh, suitable for their particular needs. Okay, so this is uh, identifying a set of issues that need to be addressed, and how about the actual development of the platform? Any ideas on that? Um, most of the things that we've talked about are probably existing tools. For instance, one of okay. the things uh, that was mentioned was, uh, uh, Tori mentioned that he likes to do his documentation as video. Video does not work for somebody with a very low bandwidth connection. So, as an intermediate step, the back-end rendering engine, you should be able to put into it um, keyframes and say, at such and such a time, I want a keyframe of my video. And if the user says, I'm in a low, low bandwidth environment, then the server will capture these keyframes and transmit four smaller images of keyframe data rather than trying to send an entire giant video over this low bandwidth. Okay. Um, likewise, uh, if, if you have, for instance, a hearing impairment or, again, a bandwidth issue, um, to do a speech-to-text uh, pass over the video and render that video's text, speech, as text in the document is something that should be able to be handled at the server end, and then the lower bandwidth text data can be pushed out to, to the user. Um, we recognize that these things are not going to be perfect, but allowing perfect to be the enemy of good in this situation is, is probably not an acceptable acceptable thing. Okay. And of course, if the doc, if the server is rendering these things, then a, a suitably motivated user can always go in and improve the, uh, the speech-to-text, for instance. Um, something else we talked a lot about is using some sort of a symbolic language so that even if you're... Um, even if you don't speak another language, you have the option of uh, translating your instructions for assembly, for instance, yeah. using an existing library of symbols that have been developed just for this, well, maybe not just for this, but symbols that exist, um, such that you can, you can, as you would select a normal translation from, say, English to Russian, you could say English to symbolic, okay. And then that allows a user, again, a suitably motivated user, to put in a translation to a, 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 a platform, like a language, and hopefully culturally agnostic platform uh, for documentation. So you guys identified issues, and is the output of your group also to identify potential existing solutions? Not yet, although okay. that might be something that uh, we could tackle in the afternoon session. Okay. Um, and, uh, and of course, uh, another big goal here is that just by addressing this, 
um, by getting people thinking about it, the the goal, the hope is that other things will um, will come to light that need to be addressed with this. Okay. And as users. Uh, address the system as users interact with it, because they'll see that we have considered all of these accessibility options, hopefully if there is something that they have a problem with, they'll feel comfortable asking for an accessibility uh, enhancement, whereas they might not even think of asking another system where there's been no clear attempt at doing that. Okay. Well, that sounds some, like some valuable output. Okay, thank you, Mike. All right. Just tell, tell the audience once again who you are. I'm Mike Hord from Spark Fun Electronics. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.